fight. So deep versus Swain Brown, we actually prepped a bit. You mostly just want like your kind of like chunky early game power cards. He's not running Mist Call. He got, apparently got triggered and cut the card. So my culling strikes will uh, threaten quite a bit here, actually. Keeping the Maokai down is quite a big deal. I mean, we really are just kind of like the control deck here. So I'm happy taking like very reactive passes like that. I'm not really too pleased with this hand, honestly. It's all right. It's like it, we've got Leviathan and Culling, and that's kind of like the big deals in this matchup. But this is a deck that just wants to play like super slow, basically. Salvage, interesting. That's a pretty guard for. That's a pretty good card for him in a matchup like this, like a real slow matchup. I think that's definitely going to be the kind of thing he wants. You can just play like full reactive. Unfortunately, the sentry just doesn't really offer a lot here. Uh, I mean, ever isn't sentry, however, is fine. Do you want to spend my mana a little bit? We still have like the anti Maokai cards. Usually, his pass on turn four on the attack represents like a Jaw Hunters. That's often what this is, which kind of sucks against sentry, so I'm very happy about that. It's a it's a a pretty big read here. It's like it's hard for that pass to not represent Jaw Hunters. Could be a Maokai. I mean, but it's something that's like you can kind of always think, okay, that's pretty much in his hand. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, we're kind of both getting the draw, but oh, okay. So yeah, I mean, we can sort of just play this pretty passively. Swain is perfectly fine here. We don't need to keep, like, our flexibility above this point. And Swain doesn't really get too punished out by anything, really. Like, getting getting this developed to the board is probably pretty fee free. The biggest thing is, like, we're still keeping enough mana for Culling Strike. And we're... it's not, like, the biggest thing ever if he, like, has a way to kill our Swain early. It's not really that huge. We have a pretty awkward hand. Culling Strike is a really nice card in this matchup, but three of it is just too many. Like... And this is why I don't really like 3 Culling Strike in this deck. My prep group kind of talked me into it. Oh well. So there's not a ton going on here. I think this is kind of the easiest pass of my entire career. I think this is actually like not even close. Just looking to like slow play, get stuff like the Viathan. Moves in on an open here. I think this is perfectly fine. So the only question just comes down to like, you know, what we're actually countering with this. I could like go for aggressive draws here, just like kill off my own sentry just to find a way to maybe use my mana this turn. It's not bad. I do sort of value having this card dead, right? Just because my hand has such low optionality. And I think the 2-1 blocker really just doesn't give enough value otherwise. I think I'm actually fairly happy taking a block like this. And we know he's not going to do a combat trick. If my hand had better options for stuff I might want to play on this turn, then I wouldn't have done this. Tavern Keeper is kind of a nut play here. I'm pretty happy with this. We're really not giving him that good of like a ruination. Like, this is just fine. This is like exactly why we wanted the Sentry to die. That's really, really good for us. And also, because it's a unit effect, it doesn't... It's not reactable, right? He can't grasp in response to it. It just goes off without a response, which is really sweet. Okay, so there's definitely a few things we can do here to make that kind of not really end up happening. Um, The biggest thing is like you could take a fervor here to just kind of like make our unit not die. The one downside is to do that we'd have to fervor Swain and I think keeping the Swain alive is actually a bit more important really. Um, we are aggressively like flipping the Swain by doing this. I think keeping this 3-3 alive just unfortunately can't really do enough of anything. So I'll just let it die. And I think here, we might be at the point where I might just play a sentry just as a body. I don't know, the stun really does nothing. The body has kind of a hard time making a huge difference. It's such an awkward hand though. But yeah, it's just like control mirrors basically. So you're going to make a lot of plays that look pretty weird. So we can open with a stun here and see what happens. Sort of a bit of an unfortunate hands. I mean, we are the slower deck. He's threatening to burn his own card. Yeah, we'll... we'll just pass first for sure. I mean, he's on a 10 card hand, and even if he wasn't, I don't think he can really take a pass there. 
We're only at a 9 card hand, so if he passed back, we'd draw and he wouldn't. I mean, honestly, taking the double sentry here looks pretty juicy. I don't know. I could see this being like a bit of a bait. It's a pretty aggressive play, and saving like a sentry for later is gonna have some real impact. But getting the swing attack in is gonna be really nice as well. I don't know, using both sentries here might just be really trolly, man. It's like, we can just block down his units though. None of his units can actually like properly block through the sentries. The biggest problem is like, the swain attack getting through isn't really as valuable. And we are dealing... We are, we're letting his thorny toad go off for like a pretty effective heal. Oh, I could see just keeping the passes, man. This is a super bad hand. This hand is so bad. I mean, we could take, like, the hyper-aggressive culling strike, dude. Oh, Jesus. That's such a crazy line. I... I think we might actually have to with a hand this bad. Because, like, the banked mana is just not quite doing enough. And we need to sort of, like... The third culling strike is really not doing enough here. But by doing this... We're threatening a pretty crazy amount of damage in a fairly unreactable way. Like, you can't really do very much to this. We're making him overheal on the Toad. Um, we're basically putting him to, like, 8 health here. And we have some, like, pretty good, like, reach over the top kind of plays. So if he's sitting on an option here, his option can only be Vile Feast. That's the only thing he'd really be thinking about here. If I were him, I would Vile Feast one of the spiders. That's gotta be a no-brainer. Or you could Vile Feast Swain, I guess. Maybe that's what he's thinking about right now, if he can, like just the five vile feasting a swain if he's got vile feast he has to play it here and there's nothing else he could really be thinking about i think so we're getting a little bit of like presence on the swain level up this is a matchup we have three icefield archers in this deck and we'd really really like to have to be able to pair archer with culling strike to take down like big boys like nautilus it's really sad like not having both of them this is an interesting attack so if i play leviathan he could have a sort of decent ruination just because we don't have second leviathan I don't know if I can power him down well enough if he gets this ruination off. He's running two ruinations. Man. This is a really close one. That ruination sets him back so far. But if my hand if my hand was like a bit different, I'd love to bait out the ruination here. But my hand really does not want to get ruinated. Like I don't have enough closers really. That's bad. And he's like, he knows exactly what this pass means. He knows that I have a Leviathan and that I'm afraid of Ruination. Like, that's that's the only reason I would pass here. So he knows that if he plays anything, he's letting me Leviathan. So he kind of has to pass as well. But these symmetrical passes can't really favor me here. We also have to be concerned with his one of atrocity. But he's not running Vengeance, which is pretty interesting. So, I mean, if he's got Ruination, then he's easily bluffing it here. I might not really have a hand that can play around Ruination. I mean, dude's at 10. He's pretty close to deep. Dude is at 10. I don't think he tossed one Ruination. I've been, like, watching the tosses, but I did miss one of them. fairly good as well. At one mana, we don't have enough of a response to that. So my other Swain is leveling up. But my hand is pretty hard to manage here.
This deck doesn't have, like, amazing over the top, but what it does have is Atrocity. And we don't really have a great way to stop the Atrocity. I mean, he should be forced into playing into us here. There's really no way he can avoid playing into this, I think. Like, if he has a stab to remove this, he has to take it, no matter what. Especially if it's something non-committal, like a Vile Feast or even a Withering Whale. There's no way he can avoid trying to kill this. I mean, I'd love to see, like, a weird Desperation Ruination, but, I mean... Uh, that's a that's a pipe dream, I think. It looks like an atrocity. Wow, that's weird. Oh, it's just a whale. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I should just be set playing the other Leviathan. I mean, I could combo, like, Fury of the North plus something. If Fury into Swain was possible, that would be, like, really, really good. I mean, if I just open attack with my big second Leviathan and threaten the double Fury, don't I just win? He's at 10. This would put him to 7. I've got double Fury plus the Overwhelm. And I'll have... Might have some over the top. That's a weird line. But he has no Vengeance, so he can't stop this at 7 mana. Like, he, he can't stop me from moving in at fast speed, which is insanely vulnerable. It's an insane vulnerability of his deck that he doesn't have Vengeance. So it forces him to play Nautilus here, which is pretty counterable. Because, like, now he doesn't really have that good of a Ruination, which is really, really important here. Death Sand is a pretty good pickup, I think. So now, if I Swain, I don't think he's got great responses. He cannot ruinate this board, and he can't, like, Vengeance or anything either. The only thing he could possibly do is Atrocity. And that's, like... There's pretty much no way I can play around that here, which is very unfortunate. But, I mean, I can't even, like, bluff anything to play around that either. I mean, I kind of just have to take it and hope he doesn't have Atrocity, which is pretty sad. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah, and he knows we don't have a counter response to this. Oh well. Fatality. Hmm. That one's pretty interesting. God, I wonder about breaking that game down. That's definitely been the most interesting matchup we've had so far, for sure. I don't think it's even close. Like, there's there's a lot to evaluate about how to play that game out. It's really hard to beat the Atrocity at the end, though. Like, with our deck. We just needed to, like, force the pressure on him. I will say, having no Icefield Archer just, like, kind of loses us that game. That's so sad. Like, we're, we're on the three Icefield Archer version. If we have drawn, like, even a single one, I think we ought to win that game. So this is the weird Bromlux deck. Pretty weird stuff. Round two. I mean, Fury of the North is good in these like mid-range beef matchups. I think you really do just want to be on the multiple Broms. The Death Sand is usually not hitting quite enough here. You just want to make sure you have more beef than the other guy. So the double Brom Fury hand feels solid. This is a pretty good hand here. This is kind of what you want. Big things to watch out for in this matchup are going to be the Unyielding Spirit, the Judgment, and the Radiant Guardian. He's running a lot of these cards that are just like, sort of like weird things that you need to watch out for. So usually the double float means he has to be on Remembrance, which is okay, because we have the Furry of the North as well as the Sentry to potentially try to counter that. Sentry allows us to go a little bit wide, but it's sort of pointless here. This is kind of like the easiest Fury of my entire career. Just start getting that nice and early chip damage. So if he's got something like a Braum, the Brahms do have the ability to trade down. Um, is there anything he can really play that specifically punishes the Braum here? 
I don't think there's really anything, actually. Like, keeping my options flexible isn't really going to give me value here. And there's nothing he can play that makes me, like, sad that I played Braum here. There shouldn't be a single thing in his deck. It's like, if both of our Brahms summon Mighty Poros, that might be slightly better for him. But it's like, I mean, it's going to be pretty symmetrical. And there's no, there's nothing we're going to ne have needed to have kept a response for up. So we could burn his mana here, or we can deal the three damage. He's almost certainly sitting on a play that he just didn't want to let us get a Mighty Poro off with. So we can burn one mana or deal three. And you know, it's like, his deck can use spell mana pretty well. I think, I think burning that one mana just isn't quite worth it here. You could do a cheeky thing, because he's always on an option here. He just didn't want to get us, get us a Poro. But I think his deck can use spell mana a little too well. And because we dealt that early chip, this three damage could actually be pretty important. So I do think I have to take it here. Now he passes at three, which is quite interesting. That's very interesting. I feel extremely tempted to just pass this back to him. Um, absolutely, absolutely, I'm just gonna go to my turn here, for sure. Not a chance I won't, I think. Okay. So we've got some pretty sick options. I mean, I do really want to take this pretty aggressively. So the only question is, like, what are his scare options, right? And I think he's really not on too much. It's like... I kind of want to just shove in a sentry and start playing pretty aggressively. This looks like a really sweet option that doesn't really get punished by anything. It's like, usually on these turns his scare cards are going to be stuff like the defensive Lux, which given my board state in particular I wouldn't really mind. It's like the Lux doesn't really do much on blocker when I've got the brown here. So there is the defensive Lux, now he's floating 3 which gives him the ability to single combat here, but I don't think it's an insanely impactful single combat. We could do this. Um, I mean, we also have the ability to just go to town with the other sentry. I think that's a little too trolly, though. I don't think that... I mean, the stun isn't really doing anything here. We could just play a different unit, though. I do think that the Crimson Disciple threatening even a potential take heart here is a fairly big deal. Wow, I might just pre-take heart the Crimson Disciple. It's not really punishable. This is like, it's very aggressive, but I actually think I really like this. It's like, he's down to 5, and we even have Fervor, so... I mean, if he has, if he like, single combats to kill Brown, we literally win this turn. Which is pretty funny. And he has a hard time playing around our options here. So like, taking really aggressive things is good. It might have even just been better to like, take the final, to take, take the one last unit and like, absolute full swing this. I could see that. So I mean, if I fervor the Disciple right now, he kind of has to have single combat to not immediately lose on the spot. But I mean, we have to put him on single combat, right? We have to like, be comfortable chilling. It's kind of insane to not just chill here. And that's a sick draw. So his deck doesn't really have healing. It, it only has Radiant Guardian for healing. And with Arachnoid Sentry and, and Noxian Fervor, we can make that really awkward. Because if he moves in for a single combat, we have Lethal right here, right? And our sick draw of Leviathan on 7, I think, should get us there. So what does he need now? Some weird, like, Mage Seeker Investigator hands? Unyielding Spirit's never any good here. Judgment's never any good here. Like, none of his scare cards are scary anymore. The scariest thing is like Radiant Guardian double single combat hand, basically. So we need to avoid enabling the Radiant Guardian to get lifesteal. It's gonna be like the biggest thing. So that single combat is basically saying, I've got a Radiant Guardian, kind of. Wow, there's a couple of different plays here. I mean, if I don't let him enable the Radiant Guardian, he sort of can't win. Because the Radiant Guardian could be on a second single combat, that actually makes things a little awkward. But if he plays it, then I can just stun it with Sentry, and then threaten its own single combat. So I think I just play full reactive here. And the final spark can't really do much to this board state either. I think I'm pretty happy letting this through. I think I have to be. So, I mean, his play has to be a Radiant Guardian here, and then I'm always going to Sentry it. 
And then we're always going to beat his single combat. If he has a second single combat here, which is kind of the only way he stays alive, he can't really use it here, but we have the fervor to beat it if that's his play as well. So now we can just kind of play whatever we want. I think Tavern Keeper adding like slightly more bulk is fine. So we're forcing him out of the ability to use the second single combat by just keeping our reactive option open here. Um, we don't really need to use Flock. It doesn't really make a difference. And he shouldn't have answers to the Leviathan either. So I think the Leviathan looks pretty good. I don't think there's like big punishes to this. Open attack is also fairly sweet here, but the thing is he could have like some weird stuff. Judgment is kind of the biggest thing. We don't really have a great counter to Judgment if we open attack. We just like lose the game on the spot. Whereas like if we just don't attack here, he just kind of can't win. It's funnily, it's, it's funny here. He's sort of like forced to pass into us because like the only way he's good here is with stuff like Harsh Winds and Judgment that he'd have to keep Mata open for. But if he passes, I mean, we'll just pass back and sort of kill him. The one final problem though is that, I mean, he is he is threatening the like we might not if if he passes and if his hand is like judgment single combat we might not be able to beat that hand we need him to spend like two mana here and then we have a guaranteed win okay that's a weird play oh he's using he's using it for the for the beam Man, beating single combat is slightly awkward here. But I mean, we don't need much damage to represent lethal. Swain is flipping if we're passive. I mean, we can't really be in much of a hurry here. The only thing is like, we can beat some weird draws by denying the draw first. I don't know, time has to be on our side though. And he has to open attack to like basically threaten the Radiant Guardian life stealing cure, I think. He should have really like no choice but to do that. So funnily enough, I can kind of force his action by blocking with the disciple. Does this it doesn't kill him, but I mean it puts him into a range that he can't really exist at. I mean he's got a couple of like furry of the norths. Furry into single combat is like kind of how he wins here. We could just let him deal the damage and go to seven. Seven puts him to four, which is in fervor range on our attack. And our Swain is threatening to level up here. The only problem is like, he can take a proactive single combat now. We can't lose to any hand that doesn't have single combat in it. He can do like a Fury single combat Leviathan, and we don't have our like exact lethal to beat that here. So this is surprisingly awkward. I mean, if he has a really specific hand, he could try to take a take a win. Okay, I don't think that's too much of a problem here. Shouldn't really change anything. Probably has to hit like the Swain. Interesting. Wow, that's very interesting. He's trying to like threaten damage to me? What? Isn't that kind of crazy? What the hell is his hand that he's doing that? Concerted strike. So now his only option has to be basically single combat. And this should basically force him into using it exactly here, right? Prismatic barrier does actually stop the Swain from leveling. I'm 
much time do we have left? 20 minutes left? Okay. So we're, we're, we're making pretty good time here on, like, last game. That's good. Okay. Brutality. I'm gonna go ahead and be right back before we get into game three. Okay. So overall, we've played some pretty clean games with our control decks, like Swain Braum and... Um... Karma. We've made a couple of misplays on the deep deck so far, though. Final round. Fight! I don't know, Obliterators should feel pretty good here. I like the idea of just being able to jam some stuff early. It is a matchup that, like, the idea of, like, some amount of tempo pressure is kinda nice. So I'm fairly happy keeping Petty Officer in Mist's Call. Ruination is pretty sweet here, I think. Like, it's gonna be a slow matchup, you know. Obviously, when we had Ruination earlier against Scouts, it was, like, a little risky. Um, but here, this matchup is definitely gonna go long enough for us to get pretty guaranteed value out of Ruination. So the question is, is, like, do we get our one in for free? I think we have good odds of doubling up to two, so we'll risk it for the double up on damage here. Because mostly he's like wanting to do the Remembrance floats anyway. So he'll go ahead and jam the Remembrance here. His nut is the Great Thorn Companion. This is pretty good too. Just want to make sure he doesn't get like crazy top value really. Yeah, and I think I'll just kind of enable some slightly aggressive positions here. Go ahead and summon a random 2-1. Gives me a somewhat solid attack. It's a little hard for him to get, like, you know, crazy value out of taking, like, aggressive blocks here. I think I will just take the solo attack, though. We really do want to be slow playing this position. This hand turned a bit awkward pretty fast. I mean, one or two devourers is good. The third one is quite redundant, I think. This is an interesting draw. At the end of the day, our objective here is pretty simple. We're just trying to nut out with our Ruination. That's basically it. He's got some good challenger value. He'll be able to like clean up my board and keep everything on his side alive though. So I mean we will kind of need to use an aggressive grasp I think. Ooh, that's a pretty good start for him. Very spooky stuff. Very, very spooky start. Wow, I might actually ruinate this instead of grasping. I don't think I can really get a better ruination than this, and I really do need to play it slower. He will have a solid redevelopment into me. But like, this is a super aggressive start that we're basically just gonna focus on shutting down here. I mean, I can attack. This tells him like exactly what I'm doing. Whatever. I mean, he'd, he'd, he'd have to literally like misplay. I'll, I'll throw a Darius emote. Maybe, maybe I'll convince him. I mean, he's just gonna, he's just gonna pass. He like, he's not gonna make that mistake. It's just really, really dumb. So he should play like a Lux here after the Ruination. Remembrance? If he's got like a triple Remembrance hand, then I'm feeling pretty bad. Nice memes, dude. I mean, second Remembrance in a Guardian is pretty sick. That's gonna be like fairly rough, I'm thinking. I'll have to take a bit of damage here. So he's taking, he's taking a cheeky detain. Basically, as soon as he kills his unit, he'll get his guardian back. Um, but it won't be like, it won't have the guardian tag, right? Like, it, it won't have the lifesteal, because it'll basically just try to summon a new radiant guardian. So, I mean, I'm sure he'll be able to kill his own card. I'm sure we won't be able to get, like, the clean devourer here. 
He should just like counter with a single combat. Pretty much always. Um, or like, worst case scenario for him, maybe like a weird Fury of the North. There's really no way this works. That would be a really big misplay on his part, and a really specific hand too. Best case scenario is he doesn't have a single combat, so he's forced to take like a sort of weird Fury of the North. Hmm. Okay. It's not too bad. Taking the single combat on top of that. That's quite interesting. I like that play. He's using a lot of resources. He's basically playing this position very, very aggressively. He's using a lot- like, his, his hand is empty, right? It's like he's kind of blown his entire load just on, like, trying to power us down here. So he kind of has to take an open attack, and... I mean, he has a couple potential answers to grasp, but usually nothing great. I mean, eight's still quite healthy here. Okay, unyielding spirit. I mean, it's pretty cute. Basically, just like it's the only play he can make that puts him that puts us lower on health. But I mean, we should be good to just develop out our board now, right? Like, I don't think there's very much stopping us from obliterating the rest of his fields. We want to basically like force out the answers a little bit early. We've got Mist Call as well. That's interesting. Yeah, it's probably unnecessary getting that out there. That was probably just a mistake. It's like, it's much better to take the obliterate on something that, like, can't possibly provide the threat. Because, like, the, the unyielding spirit is the one we want to obliterate, and now we kind of wanted to have uh, taken more aggressive deep options. His deck tends to not have, like, great ways to do damage over the top, though, which is kind of the best thing for us here. Like, he's forced to play very aggressively in a deck that really, like, doesn't have great aggressive options. He could be on something weird like Second Fury. It's not too hard for him to have a decent response to Devourer of the Depths. Yeah, so I think the best option just has to be the slow play here, really. We don't need to be keeping our mana open right now. Just make sure that we have enough blockers across. This is a high roll. I don't know, his board isn't really like too scary here. So my block here is always really straightforward. I'm a bit concerned about a judgment, but I'm not I'm not really, like, that concerned, am I? It's like, Judgment would be adorable here, but I don't... I mean, he, he'd draw, like, a couple of cards. I don't think Judgment would be, like, necessarily game-winning. It is a one-of, so it's, like, a little too narrow here. It was definitely bad popping this Guardian too early. I didn't want him to get it for lifesteal, but that's just not worth it. It's like, especially in games like this, it's a lot safer just using the po uh, the Obliterate on either the Sentry or the Investigator. Because my win condition isn't really about his health, it's just about like making sure that we are stopping his like long-term resource gain. And Sentry and like the Investigator combat every turn are kind of his two real engines here. So he does have the pretty cute judgment here. I think I'm perfectly fine with this. What this does mean is if I do want to use Fading Memories, I should take it now. Okay. I think that's pretty alright for me, really. We just basically need to be playing Devourers every turn now. We can play around Concerted Strike by devouring this one first, I guess? I might need a couple more devourers here, actually. So Mist's Call has some alright hits. I think it's pretty okay to play out here. I don't know, can I engineer better hits with this Mist's Call? 
We can probably just like spam fish. So the big problem here is like stuff like Concerted Strike could be kind of annoying if he stops this Devour from going through. I don't think we really have a great opportunity to play around that though. He could use a weird like Second Fury I guess. He's just jumping it down. That's gotta be his best play here. He doesn't really wanna like move in too aggressively. Really not too sure what he could honestly be sitting on. He gets a random thing off of Mage Seeker Conservator. It's kind of impossible to play around that. You can get like Ruination and stuff off of it. But at this point, the game is just like, sort of like slapping beef against each other. Why would you Maokai really late? Really, really late. But it's okay here, I guess. Like, these are the kind of games that I don't draw. I don't mind drawing like a late Maokai against. So it sort of like threatens to end the game in four turns. And again, the deck just doesn't really have any over the top. So we're not really like too concerned about positions like this. Play more Devourers. So this will level the Maokai. This hurts his outs because it deletes the champions out of his deck, but most importantly, it's just like getting the ball rolling on this four turn clock. And especially the, the fact that he has a second sentry on the board sort of punishes him, turns it into a, like a three turn clock. So we're feeling pretty cozy here. I mean, his deck just doesn't really have a way to end us. Like, we don't even necessarily need this clock to threaten a win, I think. It just kind of helps. I mean, am I legitimately playing around, like, Ruination? I'm sort of, like, low-key scared of Ruination. It's like, he's drawn two cards off of Conservator now. I actually have to play around cards like Ruination. Okay. So he's got two turns left to try to end this game, and I don't think he really can. His deck doesn't really run like these game ending conditions. The only thing he can do is like have a Lux, but he can't really have a Lux, I think. Like he's playing as if he hasn't had a Lux this entire time, so it should be impossible for him to have one really. I mean, I don't think I'm missing any, like, weird outs. I don't know, and it's kind of funny, because, like, uh, sometimes you just get something random off of Conservator that just wins him this game, right? Like, that could just be happening. Yeah, we're good. Brutality. Okay. So that one was dicier than it probably should have been. Um, I think it's fair overall. I was more happy with how the first set went. Which sounds kind of like a little ridiculous to play, uh, to say, but it's kind of like, I don't know, it's important mentality, I guess.